My name is Joshua Snyder and I'm giving a video response to marriage equality. I'd really like to just actually point out a few simple things that I think will help clear up a few pieces. There are going to be some items that maybe I can't erase, but some ideas and talking points that I think make a lot of sense. First of all, religious marriage and civil marriage are two totally different things. As a church, as a following or religion, whatever you want to call it, you have freedom to choose who you decide to marry. If you are a church of God and a Satanist wants to get married and your beliefs as a preacher is to only marry individuals who believe in God, you have the right to deny them that. If you believe that gay marriages shouldn't be recognized, as of now, you have the right to do that. And you can maintain that, but you got to listen real careful because you're starting to infringe on what's called civil marriage, and that's what I'm getting to a point here. You see, so that gives you the religious rights. The separation of church and state was very intentional. Civil marriage was created in order to recognize all the different religious marriages that may come through. That's where the line's getting blurred. No one's asking churches to do marriages for gays. The gay community, the LGBT community, is asking to have their marriages recognized. So if a church that they go to, some churches actually believe in the term love and that the union can be made between two people who have a strong enough feeling for each other, obviously some do not, but some believe that two consenting adults can actually make the decision to decide to try and make something long and committed and amazing. Those churches that aren't bigots and willing to do that have the right to then issue a marriage license from a religious standpoint, so it can be recognized at a civil. So you're actually tromping on a totally different aspect and rights that aren't being taken away. And also, how does that bother you? A gay marriage couldn't bother you any more than atheists getting married, Wiccans getting married, or Satanists, or if you don't allow individuals who've gotten divorced, whatever the case may be, but those don't change the definition of your marriage. So. What's interesting about this whole debate is that something that is very personal, you're pulling into your church. Because you see, if your followings or your followers don't believe in gay men getting married, if your preachers preach against gay marriage, why on the most amazing day of our lives would we ever want to give you the ability to marry us or the opportunity? If you just kept your nose out of our bedrooms, we'd keep our nose out of your churches and we'd all win. We would get our civil marriages recognized by whatever churches are willing to do it for us and you wouldn't have any gays being married by priests. I find it sad that your marriages are insecure enough and not stable enough to be bothered by outside sources. Gay marriage won't convert normal marriages into gay marriages. There's not some magic catchy bug that's out there that's going to pollute the earth when it comes to being gay. Then you all dress a little better and wear bows to bed. But you seem to think that we can influence your marriage or cause some kind of redefinition of the word marriage for you, which I think actually spells out or shows some insecurities within your own beliefs of marriage and some fears that maybe you might want to have looked at. So long story short, nothing from the gay perspective of two men getting married, two women getting married, will affect you. There's going to be no access given to your church. Nobody's going to want access to your church. Nobody's going to come stomping in in some gay pride parade and say that you have to marry us because that's not going on now. If you notice, the battle's all at the courts, pushing to try and get our abilities and our rights with the government to be married, to be able to see the ones that we love if something goes wrong, to spend time with them to be able to take care of matters that need to be done financially if, God forbid, something horrible happens, or just to make a commitment that's recognized by more than just ourselves, but by the country that we live in, that we pay taxes in, that we're proud to be in, that some of us proudly serve. It's something that just is a right as an individual who lives here and loves this country. If two individuals love each other, they should have the right to make that commitment forever. So take some time and think about how much this truly affects you. 
how much it truly affects your family. Because gay couples have been around for a very long time. If they start using the word marriage, it's not going to redefine marriage for you. Because we've been using the word love for a very long time. And it hasn't affected you yet. So what makes you think that this is going to affect you? We're individuals, we're people, we're neighbors, we're family. We are just people who want to be loved and be able to express it in the most amazing way that you get to right now. So stop worrying about other people. We're not trying to go after your marriage. We're after recognition in our country to be recognized just like every other individual. And it's right we'll get. You can keep pushing back, but the tides will turn. It'll just be sad if you're one of the individuals who are on the wrong side of it. So, Godspeed with all the love that you have for whomever you love, gay, straight, whatever the case may be, your third marriage, your fourth marriage, atheist, Satanist, Wiccan, or Catholic, whatever the case may be, if you're in love, you get to express it and feel happy about it on a daily basis. So just let us. Don't worry, we'll leave you alone, I promise. You'll still be married, and you'll still be close-minded, and probably not wear as nice of clothes. So, I have a channel. I don't know, maybe I'll try and put a button on here somewhere, so I'll point like I did it. Check it out. Bye.